And from that swiftly follows the forgiveness of sins. And that's what Jesus said too. This is the blood of the New Testament which is shed for many for the remission of sins. That's the Lord's Supper as a sign, signifying to a steep stamping it upon your sins are forgiven, believer. You're assured of this. And redemption and forgiveness of sins are intrinsically linked in the scriptures. In Christ we have redemption through his blood, comma, the forgiveness of sins. That's what redemption issues in. Pardon, remission of all transgressions. And we need to state that the forgiveness of sins and redemption are particular. In the Lord's Supper, we're feasting upon Christ who presents to us also the truth of limited atonement. My blood, Jesus said, is shed for many, not everybody, for the remission of sins. And that in itself should keep any Arminian from the Lord's Supper. For many. That's what it's shed for. That's what we are testifying together as a body of Reformed Christians. For many. Not for everybody. Now I mentioned redemption and the forgiveness of sins because they are central. We could widen this out to all spiritual blessings. The cup of blessing which we bless. Isn't it the communion of the blood of Christ? The blessings which we receive in the Lord's Supper could be dealt with in many, many different ways. We have them at least here in John chapter 6, verse 40. This is the will of him that sent me. This is what God desires and wishes and wants. This is what he achieves. This is the will of him that sent me. That every one which seeth the Son and believeth in him may have everlasting life. That's God's will. Every one of them do. And I will raise him up at the last day. All who have eternal life, all who believe, are raised up at the last day and not one of them is lost. That's God's will. That's his effectual desire. He sees to it that we don't perish. Verse 45 is a particularly attractive verse. It is written in the prophets. I love the way Jesus can just pick something from the Old Testament that gets right to the heart of it and summarizes the message of those men of God of old. They shall be all taught of God. Pull that out of Isaiah 54. They're all going to be taught of God. And this refers to the sweet inner teaching of the Holy Ghost. That's what's seen to us in the sacrament too. Every man therefore that hath heard, that's the hearing of the inner call of the word, and hath learned of the Father, every one of them comes to me. He comes. My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. That's signified and sealed to us in the sacrament too. That's why the sacrament is a message of particular grace. Because the Lord's Supper signifies and seals the gospel. The only gospel. The gospel of our salvation. And we have it too. In verse 56. The blessing of union with Jesus Christ. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood. Dwelleth in me. And I in him. Christ dwells in you through faith. And that's signified and sealed in the Holy Supper too. In fact, you could say, and you'd be right in saying it, that all of these spiritual blessings and more are received through union with Jesus Christ. And that's very easy to understand. Because once we're united to Christ, and he comes clothed with all the blessings, we receive all the blessings. You can't have the blessings without Christ. You can't have Christ without the blessings. You must have both together. And all who receive these blessings 
are not just blessed, but they're more and more united and one with Christ. That's what this Lord's Supper, Lord's Day says. It's becoming more and more united. That's what it is through faith and proper partaking of the Holy Supper. More and more united to Christ's sacred body by the Holy Ghost. That same Holy Ghost that dwells in Christ and in us. So though Christ's in heaven and we're on earth, and there's vast difference in terms of position, as far as heaven is from earth, we are still flesh of his flesh and bone of his bone. And we're both governed by the one spirit, the spirit of Jesus Christ. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? It is not only embracing by faith, it is also that being united to Christ's body. This means necessarily that since we are united to Jesus Christ, we are all united to one another. You can't escape that. If, for instance, to use the best analogy I can think of, and please don't fault me if you don't think it's very good, but if we had a piece of string, and we all held that same piece of string, I've got a piece of string, you've got a piece of string, and it was all attached to a hook on top of that ceiling. And everybody had their own bit of string. If I'm attached to that hook by my bit of string, you're attached, then we're all through that. We're all attached together. Very simple. You probably could have got it even without my poor illustration anyway. Because it isn't hard. Answer 77 states that we being many are one bread and one body because we all partake of one bread. All believers, one body. All believers, one bread. And that's what you say when you come to the Lord's Supper. You say, this is the case and this is what I want. I want to be more and more one body with all the people who partake. All of them. Every last one. I want to be one bread with every other person. That's what we're saying. This feast of the Lord's Supper is spoken of in terms of two main activities that we haven't addressed so far. The first one is remembrance. This do in remembrance of me. You're remembering something, something that happened in the past, and you know what you're to remember. And it's also a looking forward to the future. Remembrance, the past, the future, in hope. Ye do show the Lord's death till he come. You're looking forward to that. Which incidentally proves that the Lord's Supper is not to be abrogated at any time prior to the second coming of Christ. You keep it up all the way to the end. Unlike the teaching of some cultists like... Harold Camping. And the Christian activity of remembrance, looking back to the past and what Christ did for us then, and hope looking forward to his return, both spring from faith. They're both activities of faith. Hope is faith looking forward to, yearning for good things in the future. And you can only remember the Lord's death out of faith. So when we eat and drink Jesus Christ in the Lord's Supper, and when we partake of all his blessings, redemption, forgiveness, union with Christ as members of his body and therefore with one another, we're dealing with faith. And when we remember the cross, and hope for his return in the clouds of heaven to burn up this old world and bring in the new heavens and the new earth. Faith. 